Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It is great to see all of you here. Uh, today is President's Day weekend, which says to me that there's some absences because people are away this weekend. But we're delighted that you're here. We want to welcome any visitors that are here, and we ask members and visitors to sign the friendship registers and then pass them along to know with whom you're worshiping this morning. Uh, today, we have coffee hour after church, of course, but it's also PB&J Sunday. So we're making our 300 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, so we could probably use all the help we could get today, and um, we'll be taking them to the Salvation Army, so that will be a wonderful thing. Uh, on Tuesday at 1230, we have a nursery school uh, board meeting. On Wednesday, we have our, it's Ash Wednesday, the, we are already heading for the season of Lent. And so at 6 o'clock, we have a soup and bread supper in Fellowship Hall. And we'll have a little service in Fellowship Hall with communion around the tables. So that's at 6.30. If you're coming to the dinner, please sign up so that we know how much food to get. On Thursday at noon is the ladies' lunch out. And so we're going to Boca and so we want to invite all of you ladies to meet us there at noon. We'll have, always have a good time. And next Sunday will be the first Sunday of Lent. Uh, we will be celebrating the sacrament of baptism. And it's also Modern Music Sunday, so you won't want to miss that. Now let us begin our worship by listening to the intro. morning. Please join me in the call to worship. This morning's call is from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. I sought the Lord and he answered me. God delivered me from all my fears. Oh, taste and see how gracious the Lord is. Let us worship God. Let us worship God. Please stand and join in the hymn 158, Come Christians, Join to Sing.
be seated. Will you join me in the prayer? O God, who created all things and called them good, grant us the grace to understand that you are a God of love and of joy. Help us to serve you with joyous hearts filled with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us continue with the affirmation of faith. Please join me as well. We believe that Jesus calls us to be a light in this world and that we should let our light shine before others so that they may see our good works and give glory to God. We believe that Jesus calls us to be salty salt so that we can be used by God to proclaim his love in this world. We believe that our love should be genuine. We believe that we should hate what is evil and hold fast to what is good. We believe that if we live by the Spirit, we should also be guided by the Spirit, clothing ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, and joy. We are God's messengers. We have been blessed so that we can be a blessing to others with our new idea of clear vision, a word of hope, a kindness given, a persistent prayer, a call to action, a shout for justice, a faithful love, an ongoing compassion, a vibrant smile, and a gentle touch. We believe that God needs every one of us, each with gifts to share, each with good news to hear. Thank you, Tim. As we come to our prayer time, I'd like to let you know some of the concerns of our church family. We are continuing prayers for Vi Hanna, Dave McCann, Ken Heck, Patricia Zappone, Cynthia Mario, Neil Gamble, Marilyn, Judy, Ian, Fran, Tim, Dawn, and Dorothy, Patricia and Alan, Joan Carey, Kathy McLaughlin, Susan, Skip, Dot, Kay, John, Tristan, Ainsley, Lisa, Nancy, Amy Wells, John, Paige, Patrick, Pat, Larry Jones, Joe, Chuck Gowdy, who is having surgery tomorrow, I believe, Barb and Kate and their families, Cindy Folletto's family, Eric Laporta, Joe Mello, Jenny, and Mary Ann's family. And so, we also have a joy, I mentioned it last week, but Dave and Sharon are here this morning and they have a new granddaughter. And so we are delighted and happy for you and the whole family. So, very nice. Are there any other joys or concerns to share? Then as God's children called to pray for each other, let us join our hearts in prayer. Wondrous and generous God, your gifts are overwhelming. Your sun lights the way for our journey, and your stars puncture our darkness. Your living water quenches our thirst, and your broken bread opens the door to eternal life. Your healing touch binds up our wounds, and your forgiveness washes clean our sin. From the deepest depths of our being, our prayer gropes to find words of adoration. Come now, wondrous and generous God. Bring comfort to those who mourn the death of loved ones and of what used to be, who agonize over broken relationships. Touch those whose bodies need healing. Liberate those whose addictions warp their full potential. Surprise those whose days are filled with sameness and whose joy has ceased. Holy God, weave praise into the fabric of our church family so our lives become a blessing to others. Weave peace into our words and deeds so hatred and anger are disarmed. 
weave love into our work, so accomplishments are imbued with humility. Weave kindness into our actions, so the world becomes a joyous place to live. Weave hope into every encounter, so that we may testify to God's continuing resurrection. Weave songs into our worship, so our mourning might echo in praise to God, in whose name we pray, and whose Son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue our worship by presenting our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings.
Let us pray. Gracious and generous God, we give you thanks for your abundance that you have given to us. We bring a portion of that back this morning, and we ask you to multiply our gifts and multiply our talents so that we might serve you and spread your love throughout the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. I don't think I looked at the altar this morning, and there's a rose up there, and that is for you, Dave and Sharon, for that little granddaughter, Lainey, and she, she's just wonderful, so we're glad to have that pretty rose for her. Our scripture lesson this morning is from the, the Sermon on the Mount of Jesus. It's a long sermon, a very long sermon. It goes all the way from Matthew 4 to Matthew 6, but this little section here this morning gives us some extra instructions from Jesus. So listen for God's word to you. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. This is the word of the Lord. Will you pray with me? O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, you've gotten to know me now over four years, and I've mentioned this a few times, but I come from a long line of bad cooks. The last decent cook in my family was probably four or five generations ago. Now, we never starved or were malnourished in any way. In fact, the people in my family are known for living long into their 90s. So I guess in some ways you could claim that at least we had healthy food, it just wasn't tasty food. Now, I can honestly tell you when I grew up, the food was very bland. You see, we lived with my grandmother, and my grandmother had high blood pressure, and her doctors told her to stay away from salt, and so she did, and so did we. We had no salt. You would never find a salt shaker on the table. I never heard the words, pass the salt, and if we had company, it took about 10 minutes to find a salt shaker for them. Now, personally, today, I love all kinds of food. I don't cook it, but I love it. <laughs> so you can imagine my delight over the years to find out all the different flavors and spices, not the least of which is salt. Now, I remember hearing our scripture passage a few times when I was a little girl at St. John's by the Sea in Ventnor. It's fairly well known. Jesus said, we are to be salt and light. Now, to be honest, I could understand the light part. That made sense to me. You, you light up a path so people can go the right way. Reflecting light in the sense that people could see Jesus reflecting his light. Light coming into a church through a stained glass window in a way that Christ brings out the beauty in life. And I certainly understood that if you turn a light on, you don't cover it, or it wouldn't do any good. And I can even remember singing with the little cherub choir while we did tic-tac-toe and stuff during the sermon, This Little Light of Mine. That was a very popular song. That all made sense to me. But salt meant very little to me. And I had trouble understanding why Jesus would use this analogy to get a point across. 
And even now on the surface, it doesn't even seem like a big deal to us 21st century Christians. And part of that difficulty, I think, comes from our present day use of salt. We think of salt as just a common flavoring. It's so common these days that it's sometimes hard for people on low salt or no salt diets to find something in the prepared food or frozen food section. You have to read those labels very carefully. Salt seems to be in everything and everywhere. And in our own culture today, we sometimes make the statement that would indicate the worth of somebody. Well, we would never say salt. We might use phrases like, looks like a million bucks, good as gold, worth a mint, maybe even priceless. But would you praise somebody or give instructions by saying, be salt? Well, if Jesus was here this morning and said the words I read from scripture, you are the salt of the earth, I'm not sure we'd really have an idea of what he was trying to get at. It seems unimpressive to me, and yet the statement might have stunned the people that were listening to Jesus. So let's go back in time and figure out what Jesus was meaning with his salt. A book by Mark Kurlansky called Salt, A World History was very helpful to me this week. It told me that salt as mineral was much more valuable to humans sometimes than gold. Ancient Chinese people collected sea salt as early as 6,000 BC. And in the time of Jesus, first century AD, salt was so valuable it was sometimes used as cash currency. The Roman soldiers who marched through, marched through the empire were sometimes paid in salt. The Latin word for salt, sal, is the basis of the word salary. So it's also the origin of the expression we've all heard, he's worth his salt. 2,000 years ago, of course, salt was important because it was a preservative. There was obviously no refrigeration, no electricity for it. So salt was a lifeline, a survival, when fresh foods became scarce. Salt just prevented rot and decay. Probably when the disciples were traveling around with Jesus, they carried salted fish with them. Salt gave long life to everything it permeated. Salt was also used as a disinfectant. You've heard the term salt in the wounds. Well, if you put salt in an open wound, it's going to sting and it's going to smart. But you know, it does clean the germs out. And I have to admit that when I first heard the saying of Jesus, you are the salt of the earth, I would have guessed it had a little more to do with flavoring, like we sort of use it today. You know, Christians spice things up a bit. But I think that would have been the last thing on the listeners' minds. The food probably was as bland as the food that was on my kitchen table as a kid. Salt was much too expensive and important to just use as a flavor enhancer. Salt was precious and had important work to do. I think Jesus' listeners had a clearer idea of what Jesus was trying to say than we do. So let's think about we, what it should mean for us today, 2,000 years later. First of all, we know the salt was precious. And as children of God, we're precious, bought by a very high price by our Savior. But even though the salt was worth a lot of money, it wasn't something that just sat on a bookshelf looking pretty. Salt had important functions to fulfill, and so do we. Secondly, we know that salt can permeate and make a difference, and so we should too. If you think about cooking, you don't need much salt to flavor a pot of soup. Salt changes things. Salt is distinctive. Salt is totally different than the food you're putting it in. You never eat salt alone, or at least I certainly don't. It only becomes effective 
when it's mixed with something. So we salty saints here in church just can't sit here all the time huddled together. We need to mix with others and flavor the world. Salt has a lot of influence. A little salt goes a long way, and it only takes one salty disciple to flavor a whole community, a whole workplace, a whole neighborhood. And I think we should realize that about ourselves as Christians. People are watching us. We actually have a lot more influence than we think. Which made me think of an old Peanuts cartoon that showed Peppermint Patty talking to Charlie Brown. She said, guess what, Chuck? It's the first day of school, and I was already sent to the principal's office. You, it, it's all your fault, Chuck. Charlie Brown was shocked. He said, why would it be my fault? How could it be my fault? Why is everything with you my fault? She said, you're my friend, aren't you, Chuck? You should be a better influence on me. <laughs> now, I think most of us would call that passing the buck. And we should, in a very real sense, be a good influence on the people around us. Beyond living honorable and moral lives, I also think we should show the joy of the Lord to other people. There really is joy in being a Christian. Oliver Wendell Holmes once said that he might have become a minister instead of a judge if Christians didn't go around with so many long, sour faces. Well, there are lots of ways in which disciples can be an influence on the lives of others. Salt can also be used as a preservative. It can keep food, meat, from going bad. As salty disciples, I think we can act as salty preservatives, being the conscience of a community, speaking out and standing up for truth and justice and light. Now, in a normal winter, which is not this winter, we usually have a lot of snow and ice, and we often use salt for melting ice. Well, you know, this world is full of hard, frozen hearts. Jesus calls us to go out there and tell others about his love. Jesus wants his salty disciples to soften the hearts of others so that they can melt when the warmth of Jesus' love comes over them. One last thing I notice about salt is that it loses itself when it's working. It dissolves. When applied after it's done its work, you won't find any trace of the salt. When the salt is really effective, it loses its own identity. It loses itself in the service of something else. For us then, to be effective, salty disciples, we're going to have to lose ourselves in self-giving for the health and maintenance of those around us. Just as there isn't one part of the salt that doesn't dissolve, we also need to give ourselves to others if we're going to be the salt that Jesus asks us to be. But this is one of our problems. We have a tendency to not get close to other people for fear of rejection or being hurt or misunderstood. We think sometimes that there's not enough time, not enough of us, to go around. We pace ourselves and hold back. We just break off a little of our salt, like we're rationing it. But that's not the salt that Jesus calls us to be. Jesus has given us the pattern. Whenever he healed or helped someone, he gave completely of himself. Jesus knew we'd hesitate about giving all our salt. That's why he said so many times to his disciples, do not be afraid. I am with you. I will not leave you alone. I will come to you. I will not leave you comfortless. Jesus always emphasized the fact that when we're working for him, we never do it alone. 
You see, as we apply ourselves as salt to the wounds and needs of the world, we will be given the courage and the strength we require. St. Paul figured this out when he was working as salt in the world. In Philippians, he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So as disciples of Jesus today here in Margate and Atlantic County, we come to an important question for us. Are we being salt or are we lightly seasoned? Jesus didn't say we should be like salt. He didn't say you might be, you ought to be, you could be, it would be nice if you. No. He said, you are the salt of the earth. We either have flavor or we don't. We're either salt or, as Jesus said, worthless. Jesus didn't fool around or pull any punches. He knew that there's a lot of work to be done. There's a whole hurting world out there that needs us, that needs to know God's love and care for them. So Jesus drives the point home. Disciples are only valuable, worth their salt, if they're used. God created us, equipped us, energized us to be his instruments for changing the world. Where is God asking you to take your time, talents, and treasures to be salt? Football coach Bear Bryant had a sign on his locker room door that said, cause something to happen. That's exactly what salt does. So pass the salt and shake yourself all around. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, help us to be the salt you ask us to be. Use us so that we can change the world one person at a time. And thank you for helping us when we do that. Amen. Will you sing with me now uh, hymn number 549, verses 1, 3, and 5? I hope that you'll join us for coffee hour, and if you have the time, please give us a hand with all the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Remember, you are the salt of the earth. Go forth with the taste of God's goodness and spread the word that God is love for everyone. Amen. Mm -hmm.